Okay, welcome everybody. This is the pre and post vaccine nutritional support program. I'm Katie Wallace. I'm a naturopathic doctor. The name of my business is Human Nature and I'm doing this talk in coordination with the Willie Street Co-op. I provide a free lecture once a month and since the pandemic um, has been going on, um, they're all via Zoom. Maybe one day we'll resume to in-person lectures. Um, the other thing I do at the co-op, let me see if I can forward my slide, is I offer $40 sessions. So if you want a private session with me, you can do that through Human Nature, but the co-op has this nice deal where you can meet with me one-on-one -on -one for 45 minutes at both the East and the West stores um, for just $40. And I do have a handful of sessions every month. Uh, right now I'm currently scheduling for February. Um, so I'm full up to then, but if you're interested, I encourage you to reach out because those sessions will probably go quickly. So a disclaimer before I move forward here, this information is for health education purposes only and should not take the place of medical advice from a doctor. Okay, what I'm gonna cover today is the process of detoxification or elimination, which is really important when we're talking about vaccines because <clears throat> many vaccines carry preservatives or other chemicals with them that um, either act as preservatives or as a carrier or are important to the product. Um, and those things, especially when injected to us, are foreign things that our body needs to be able to eliminate safely and quickly. So we'll talk about the basics of detoxification in the body. The other thing that's really important when you're thinking about a healthy response to a vaccine is having a balanced immune response, right? You want the vaccine to work, but you don't want to have an allergy and you don't want it to provoke inflammation that turns into longer term um, inflammation. So we'll talk about this process of immune modulation that helps make sure that you have a really balanced response. And then I'll finish by talking about some tips for preparing for a vaccine ahead of time and some things that you can do after the vaccine to help your body. If you have any questions while we're going along, please feel free to write them in the chat. I'll have some time at the end to answer questions. So for the basics of detoxification, we're talking about trying to eliminate foreign things that are in our body. So we're exposed to things all the time. You can't really live in a bubble today, or maybe there's few places on the planet where you could isolate yourself from toxins, but they're getting fewer and fewer. Um, and so we're exposed every day to heavy metals, for example, uh, pesticides that are in the food or just in the environment and people's lawns, plastics, which are, you know, even in, um, represent uh, toxic chemicals to our bodies. Like if you're even getting a cup of coffee from Starbucks and it's all evaporating with a lid on it, and that's leaching the chemicals back into the coffee or the hot drink. So we get exposed to the plastics that our foods are in um, for food prep or for you know just presenting them at the grocery store. Uh, we also are commonly exposed to industrial chemicals, whether or not we're working on a house project or maybe you have a neighbor or you're exposed to chemicals at work. And then there's also toxins from bacteria. So when you have an imbalance in your gut, then bacteria can make toxins that are bad for the body and have to be eliminated. So our bodies are uh, really amazing in that they have this ability to detoxify, but sometimes they, um, they are worn, worn down um, and need more support in detoxification. So there's three steps for an effective detox. The first is called um, activation. And activation is where you take a chemical and you shift it into uh, a different chemical in the body. So this is step one or phase one of detoxification. It's typically happening in the cells of the liver, just taking whatever the toxin is and changing the chemical structure slightly so that the body can move it on to the next step, which is step two or phase two. 
the thing that really helps with activation is uh, cruciferous vegetables. So that would be anything in the broccoli family. So broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, um, collards, um, those are all examples of foods that have um, specific nutrients in them that support the body in this first phase. The second phase of detoxification or phase two is called neutralization. And that's where you take this chemical that the body made and you make it water soluble so that you can move it out to the third step or third phase, which is elimination. So for neutralization to happen, you need a lot of antioxidants, including one called glutathione, which is written here. Uh, glutathione is the body's most abundant antioxidant. It makes it in the liver, and it's very, very important for this process of eliminating chemicals. Adequate protein in the diet is also very critical, and I tend to encourage people to use animal proteins. Fish, seafood, grass-fed meats are superior. Um, the, that there are some vegetarian proteins, um, but most of the vegetarian proteins tend to be very inflammatory, like soy. Um, and so that's why I, I tend to discourage people from eating a lot of those denatured proteins. Sulfur is also really beneficial. Um, sulfur is found in onions, uh, garlic, Epsom salts. So Epsom salt bath would be a way you can absorb sulfur through your skin. All of these really help support the natural process, the phase two or neutralization that happens in the body. And then the last step of detoxification is elimination. So then your body's going to take this chemical that it changed and attached water to, to get it out of the body through either the bowel, like the colon through a bowel movement, or um, through urine. Um, sweating um, and lymph lymphatic detoxification also happen, but really urine and feces are the main way that um, things, toxins move out. And we need adequate fat, good fats in the diet. So olive oil, uh, unrefined coconut oil, butter, lard are examples of healthy fats. Fats found in foods, of course, like eggs, um, nuts, olives um, are other examples of really good fats. You need to have adequate salt too. Salt and fat really help with healthy digestion and regular elimination. And you also need to have uh, probiotics or good bacteria in the gut, which is cultivated by a good diet and sometimes can be supplemented with, with probiotic supplements. So that's kind of the uh, background on elimination that's important. The other piece about handling vaccines is supporting the immune response. And something that happens in the immune system, this, the body is just so cool, but um, very complex. And we make um, you know, lymphocytes, macrophages, these are all aspects of the immune system pictured here, that while they're working to respond to a vaccine, for example, to give us immune protection, they also release cytokines. Cytokines are chemicals that accompany um, the immune response. And many of them are pro-inflammatory, which means that they trigger inflammation. And inflammation is a part of a healthy immune response. Uh, like it's common for most people to have a sore arm or have a little um, pain or swelling at the site um, of a vaccine but it's not normal for that to escalate into other issues like having an allergic reaction of some kind, lots of itching, problems breathing, um, lots of redness, lots of painful swelling, or um, problems with inflammation that develop after the vaccine, you know, many days, several days, even weeks following um, the original immune response. So a healthy person will have short-term inflammation, but then be able to calm that inflammation down and have the immune system kind of go back to normal. A person with an unbalanced immune system will often, often be extra reactive um, and have problems managing that allergy or that inflammation that results. So there are specific things that help with balanced immune system. Vitamins D and A are uh, foundational to having a healthy immune system and 
many people are deficient in them, especially vitamin D um, and vitamin A. Many of us don't eat the foods high in the fat soluble vitamin A that's so important for our immune system, which would be like organ meats as an example or cod liver oil. Um, but these vitamins really help modulate the immune system. And I have a picture of my kids here just to demonstrate this point. Kids like immune cells can just be crazy and spastic sometimes and um, overly emotional or react to things that, um, you know, uh, they, they don't necessarily need to be acting out in that way. And when they are in the company of a grandparent or a parent, then they are better behaved and kind of kept in check. <laughs> so the immune system operates this way too. When you have adequate vitamin D and vitamin A and other support nutritionally, then your immune cells kind of mature into these mom cells that keep the other immune cells from going crazy and just reacting to anything or continuing to have a party when the party's over. When we have an optimal vaccination experience, there's really two components then we need to be thinking about. We need to think about how can we support our bodies to detoxify the chemicals that um, we're gonna encounter. We, we know we have that innate ability, but some of us need more support in detoxifying than others. Um, so there are some basic things we can do there to make sure that we're really supported. We also want to be thinking about balancing the immune system um, so that we're not having an allergic reaction or we're not setting ourselves up for chronic inflammation to continue after the event of the vaccine. So first and foremost, we want to think about just being healthy anyway, right? If we have a good foundation of health and we have habits established, that we kind of do without even thinking, then um, our ability to handle something like a vaccine is, is much higher. Um, and so you wanna think about a healthy diet. So just to review the things that support detoxification would be adequate proteins, lots and lots of cruciferous vegetables, things high in sulfur, adequate fats, um, adequate prebiotics and probiotics. So prebiotics are things, are foods or supplements that feed the good bacteria in the gut. It's also really important when we're talking about diet to talk about good blood sugar control because when we have high blood sugar or low blood sugar, then we have too much insulin being produced in our body and that perpetuates inflammation. So having bad blood sugar control will set us up for having more problems with inflammation. We wanna be really well rested. Our immune system recovers with rest. So if we're overly stressed, um, then the immune system really suffers. And finally, uh, something that really helps us be more resilient that isn't often talked about is getting good sunlight. Natural sunlight is really important for a healthy gut and for making vitamin D um, and having the support for the immune system to be resilient, as well as just fresh air and being out in nature. These things are very important for improving our resilience to stress. So now I'm gonna talk about some of the supplements um, that are really helpful with preparing and uh, preparing for a vaccine and then taking after a vaccine. So glutathione is one of them. It's pictured here. And it. Um, some people like to take glutathione in a liposomal form, uh, which means that it's bound to fat and easier to absorb. I've actually found that there's some high quality capsule forms of glutathione like this one available. Uh, so you just really wanna make sure you're getting a very good quality supplement that has some research behind it. If you wanna think about boosting those antioxidant reserves for detoxification. Uh, the, the glutathione can be expensive. So another supplement that's really good is called NAC, N-A-C, which stands for N-acetylcysteine. 
And acetylcysteine is the amino acid L-cysteine and in the liver, and acetylcysteine helps our body to recycle glutathione. So um, N acetylcysteine in a way is just supporting that innate ability of the body to produce the glutathione. So it can be a great supplement and maybe even preferable. Um, I might think of glutathione for somebody who knows they have a lot of chemical sensitivities and um, thinks they're pretty depleted in glutathione. It can be measured in blood tests, but it's very expensive. Um, at least the panel that I could order for people is very expensive. So it's usually just easier to kind of assess the situation and decide which one to go with. Um, both of these supplements have um, many, many other benefits. They're just amazing. So you can look into them and read more about them. But um, for the purposes of detoxification, they're really foundational. You can do some things that help boost your innate glutathione levels. Besides the glutathione and the NAC supplements, cold water therapy has been shown in studies to boost glutathione production. Uh, so the studies typically look at uh, cold water swimmers, for example, or cold shower or cold bath therapies. So you want to immerse yourself in cold water to the point of shivering um, for it to be effective. So some people might like this more than others. Um, coffee enemas can help boost glutathione production in the liver. Raw milk is a food that's naturally very high in glutathione. And you can support your liver's ability to make glutathione by having a really nourishing diet. Grass-fed meats, including organ meats, are really important for that. Healthy eggs and fresh produce all help provide some of the foundational things the body needs. Vitamin C would be another really helpful nutrient or vitamin to support um, health in this way. It's naturally antioxidant, naturally helps calm inflammation, and also helps reduce um, allergic reactions and allergies. So usually uh, taking some lemon juice daily is a good amount of vitamin C for people. I don't find that people often need an extra supplement although you certainly can take an extra vitamin C supplement um, and it can be helpful during times of higher need, like preparing for a vaccine or um, you know, if you have a cold or flu. The next two supplements include quercetin. Quercetin is um, a natural substance that's really high in the rind of citrus fruits um, and, and other fruits and vegetables. And it is just amazing for supporting a healthy immune system. So I really like quercetin. It helps uh, reduce the histamine symptoms that someone has. So if they have um, some kind of allergy or itchiness or redness, uh, swelling, um, things like that, it, any kind of allergy, um, it's really helpful. And you often can find it in a supplement where it's combined with nettles. Nettle leaf is a local herb that grows around here like a weed, um, but it also is very good at lowering histamine. I like this particular supplement because it's got vitamin C, NAC, quercetin, and nettles all together. So it's a nice combination for um, helping reduce a histamine response naturally. Here's a picture of the stinging nettle plant. Um, you may be familiar with it. It'll sting your hand if you try to pick it during the wrong time of year, but it's very nutritious and very good at lowering histamine. You can take about a half a cup of the dried nettle leaf and combine it with a quart of hot water, cover it with a lid and let it sit overnight to make what's called a long infusion, and then drain it and drink a couple of cups of it a day to help with allergies and histamine issues. Next would be things that help liver support. Uh, so uh, there are many nutritious things that help with the phases of detoxification. Dandelion root, milk thistle, burdock, taurine, artichoke, garlic, turmeric, B vitamins, all of these are things that really help the liver do its job in detoxification. And um, these are all combined in a formula like this Phytocord, but you can find different um, high quality liver um, supplements too. Um, and this is really good to take before a vaccine um, and after because it's going to just 
help boost the body's natural ability to detoxify any chemicals that you would come in contact. The liver also helps to eliminate extra histamines. So a little liver support like this is never a bad idea if somebody's kind of prone to allergies or um, you know, has a weakened immune system. And then I would say a multivitamin is um, usually really helpful because you're going to get a lot of B vitamins that will help with detoxification and just supporting the endocrine system when it faces a stress. And a lot of vitamins, vitamin A and D we talked about, vitamin C we talked about as well. Vitamin E is another really powerful antioxidant that will work for detoxification. Vitamin K um, is also very helpful for healthy immune system. Zinc and selenium are also really important. Um, and so you could just get all of these things in a combination, high quality multivitamin, uh, just to be supporting your system. So to summarize, I would say for at least a week before a vaccine, it's good to do the following supplements and you could continue them for at least a couple weeks after the vaccine as well. So something for supporting glutathione or MAC, and I talked about some of the lifestyle things that can help with that too, coffee enemas or cold showers, um, extra vitamin C, or making sure you're doing some lemon juice, quercetin can be really helpful as a supplement um, or just really increasing eating the rinds of um, citrus fruits. You might wanna do a little research and figure out which one is really high in quercetin if you wanna be food-based. Um, I typically recommend supplements for people just because it's easy, but there's many different ways to um, get this done. Nettles and then all the long list of herbs you saw. Um, so you could keep it simple with a couple of those herbs or get something complex, uh, like a complex blend for liver support, um, as well as a multivitamin. So that would be um, some tips for preparing for the vaccine ahead of time. After the vaccine, you want to think about things that help reduce inflammation in general. All those things that I just mentioned before help with inflammation, but um, they're specifically focused on um, maybe helping reduce a histamine response and helping focus on liver detoxification. So after the vaccine, those are all good things to continue for a couple of weeks, but then you might want to think about switching things to things that help reduce the pro-inflammatory cytokines. Um, and I mentioned that those are the chemicals that your immune system makes. And if your body doesn't have good immune system modulation, then you may develop some kind of more chronic sign of inflammation, like, like a skin um, problem or... Um, some people experience um, uh, inflammation in other ways um, post vaccines. Uh, they might get chronic headaches or I, I've, um, inflammation can manifest in so ways. I don't wanna um, maybe get too specific with listing different symptoms, but um, if, if you have a chronic health condition that's ongoing like joint pain or, um, some other chronic condition that's kind of unresolved, it's often rooted in just chronic inflammation. So these are things that help uh, the body to better manage that and reduce the amount of cytokines being produced as the immune system is still reacting. So resveratrol is one of my favorites. It's an extract from plants, uh, can be found in red wine and um, grapes and uh, Japanese knotweed is one of the best sources for supplements. I do typically suggest it in a concentrated supplement form, but it's a great idea to, to get it um, from food-based sources. Uh, turmeric, turmeric root is a supplement or an, an herb that most people are familiar with. It's a bright orange powder and it has immune modulating benefits as well. Glutathione and NAC, we already talked about, and there's many other um, superfoods that I'll talk about in a moment, but you can often find these in just a blend. Um, so something that can be convenient for people is this supplement, Cap Arrest, and ones like it that have a blend of turmeric and resveratrol, NAC, boswellia, some of them have green tea, 
Um, so sometimes finding a good anti-inflammatory blend can be a good solution, or you can buy powders of these things and put them in a smoothie. Um, so there's different ways to get the benefits of these superfoods. And also besides thinking about the anti-inflammatory components of resveratrol and turmeric, I think it's really helpful to look at other superfoods like medicinal mushrooms. So eating more shiitake, reishi, mushrooms, cordyceps, turkey tail, all, there's so many mushrooms that really help bolster the immune system so that again, it's not gonna become kind of bonkers. <laughs> if you can remember that picture of my kids, it's gonna be more um, well-behaved. So mushrooms are really supportive in that way, supporting an immune system that's under stress to do the right thing. Um, larch is another health extract. You can sometimes find it in a powder or a part of supplements that really helps have a strong, um, robust um, immune system. Green tea and pomegranate I also like, as well as uh, transfer factor, which is um, a special supplement that's taken from the white blood cells um, that helps to transfer greater, stronger immunity to our, um, our T cells, which are our kind of first line of defense when we face an immune stress. Um, so those are some things that can be really helpful after a vaccine just to maintain a strong immune support and keep things balanced. And then one more plug here for vitamin D, because vitamin D um, really helps set us up for um, a vaccine, but also really helps with the other side of it where we wanna make sure that the inflammation provoked by the vaccine comes under control. We want the vaccine to provoke an immune response so that it works, but then we want the body to be able to come back in balance. And things like vitamin D, turmeric, resveratrol all help that happen. Unfortunately, here in Wisconsin where I am, we uh, can't make vitamin D for almost half the year because there isn't enough UV light to do so. So it's really important to try to get as much sun as humanly possible in during the season from May to September when we can make vitamin D and then to either use a vitamin D lamp, that would be my preference, or to take a vitamin D supplement uh, to help um, make sure that vitamin D stores stay strong. There's many different ways to supplement with vitamin D, fish oil, uh, liquids, capsules, lots of good options. Um, and then uh, another mention of the importance of getting natural sunlight to the immune system. There's um, maybe more theoretical science research about this now than there is practical research. And I think it's growing to show that when we go out in the sunlight, it really charges up our body and improves our health in many ways. Um, so uh, most of us these days are living inside, especially when the weather gets cooler and we're living in an artificial blue light environment, which has some very negative consequences for our health and our immune health. So as much as you can, it's really important to establish daily habits of maximizing your time outside. So to summarize, we talked about just some foundational lifestyle practices that are really important to have for many reasons, not just for vaccine prep, but you wanna have a healthy diet, have the protein, the vegetables, the healthy fats, um, the good flora uh, for the gut and things in the diet that support that for detoxification and elimination. You wanna make sure you're getting enough rest um, because without adequate rest, there will be loss of blood sugar control. Uh, there will not be time for the immune system to fully recover and be as strong as it can naturally be. It's important to have a healthy light environment. Um, and I didn't say much about this, but getting adequate physical activity so we get circulation throughout the body is really important too. And then we talked about uh, some supplements that help before the vaccine. I would start these at least one week before and continue two weeks after things that support detoxification. So that would be the glutathione or the NAC, um, the liver support, uh, the vitamin C, 
and um, a natural antihistamine support like quercetin and nettles. And then a couple of weeks after the vaccine, you can kind of switch modes and focus on things that generally reduce inflammation and support your immune system in general. So that would be turmeric and resveratrol and superfoods like that, as well as mushrooms, plenty of zinc, um, and, and things that just make the immune system strong and able to, to do that modulation for itself. So, just another plug that I do have the one-on-one -on -one sessions at the Willie Street Co-op. You can contact me if you're interested in that. And thank you so much for listening. 